we're talking about wealth and um, you know, how, mashallah, how much has been generated. But going back to Zimbabwe, because I. When, mm. when I think Zimbabwe, everybody knows about the one trillion dollar bill. Uh, yes. I actually want to try to get hold of one. Because I have one. Just, I, have, I have one, one in my yeah. bag. If I had, I know not a book. But it's just fascinating to kind of <clears throat> hear the story of how that all transpired and hyperinflation and how people, you know, I hear stories from family about had to carry bags of money to get just some bread or something like That's that. That's right. That's right. How, how was it? You, you, because you were there at that time. Yeah. Firstly, the biggest note we've ever gotten to is $100 trillion. And uh, that $100 trillion is very interesting because what happened is uh, Zimbabwe had a, a, a problem. The problem, the difficulty was a disagreement that they had with Britain regarding the, the land. And so Britain was supposed to return the, 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 the or pay for the land, you know, pay for the land that they had given their own people uh, when they came in as colonialists and so on. So the government says, look, instead of getting the people out of the land, pay us for the land and that's it. But unfortunately, they didn't end up paying whatever the political side of it was. Uh, but as a result of all that, uh, there were sanctions against Zimbabwe because the government went out and started taking back this land to say, listen, your guys didn't pay up, you got to vacate and so on. Uh, I'm trying to word it simply. Yeah. And the economic crisis resulted in the dollar, the Zimbabwe dollar, which, by the way, was stronger than the pound in 1980. Wow. It, were, yeah, it was stronger than the pound in 1980. Uh, by the time the year 2000 came, it was started crashing. And free fall, free fall meaning it was just because of sanctions and because um, we found ourselves with no foreign currency reserves and so on. So when it started crashing, things became very expensive and every day people's, uh, you know, salaries would increase and the prices would increase to the degree that uh, there were so many zeros that the Reserve Bank governor decided that we're going to delete three zeros. They deleted three, they deleted another two, they deleted, they ended up deleting 27 zeros over a period of a, of a few years. So when we say 100 trillion, you can add another 27 zeros to that to get the yeah. exact figure of what it was. Uh, and it's true that we had, uh, you know, wheelbarrows full of money just to go and get something basic. Uh, and now it's been replaced with uh, obviously plastic money. But the inflations come back to us because every time they printed a new note or they came up with a system, they pegged it one on one with the US dollar. In a short space of time, it actually became 100, 200, 300, 500, 1000, 2000, 5000, and it was crazy, crazy. So the, the, the only way of dealing with that would have been the gold coin to go back to gold and silver and to go back to the original. There's, there was no other way of dealing with it. And Zimbabwe is rich in gold. So on one hand, you have sanctions where you cannot use the banks. Uh, and the other hand, you ha you're rich in gold. And on the other hand, there's foreign currencies. There came a time when the government made an announcement to say you can use any currency you want, because just survive. So the Zimbabweans have been making a plan to survive from 1998, from 2000 approximately. A plan to survive. You use whatever money you have for as long as two parties have agreed. Uh, the US dollar was uh, the major currency and the rand because that was readily available. And so the, the rand is a South African currency. Yeah. But unfortunately, the rand fluctuates as well a little bit. Uh, it's much more stable, but still. Uh, but the US dollar was the currency where I, I remember the former president saying, look, uh, uh, this was what he said. He says, well, they messed up with our currency. Let's use their currency. They're not going to mess up with theirs, you see. So he started. we started using US dollars. Uh, but things started becoming more and more expensive. So the talk of the gold coin, we actually created a gold coin as legal tender in Zimbabwe. So the unfortunate thing is they, they, they minted so many thousand and so on. And they were very quickly, you know, like sort of used up. And people then kept them because now that's something we're going to keep. So instead of using it and keeping going, otherwise we would have had a proper system that would have been the original Islamic system. And like I said earlier, the Islamic finance system is probably the only system that would bring about solution to all the fears of the fiat currency that we have today because it's on the brink of collapse according to the experts. And I'm not one. 
but I'm just repeating what they've said. And uh, to have proper, if you, if we all had little gold coins of different weights, right? Even the lightest ones. So they, 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 how it works is they mix it, and it's mixed in a certain way, so the value is less. And if it's less mixed, the value is more, and so on. So if we had to use those gold coins, you have r the real asset is in your pocket. Nobody can take it away from you. It's the real thing. The terms devaluation and inflation are two terms that should never be in Islamic finance. They would not be non-existent. The reason is there's no devaluation and no uh, you know, uh, inflation in that sense, more so devaluation. You can't just come in today and say we're devaluing this thing by, by, divided by 10. I mean, come on. Yeah. A gold coin is a gold coin. That's it. It's done. 